have this broker band with Marco and Casper, and we just did like few songs and made a demo. And those songs could some of, some of them could even be like Baroness songs if they would be would have been arranged different ways. And also we had Chaos Breed on the other hand with Marco, and uh, this is. Very nice sort of mixture between those those two projects. The first year we just rehearsed as a uh, five-piece band without the singer. We did some uh, five songs, and then we entered the studio to make a demo. We searched a vocalist for a while until uh, I gave a call to Mikko because I've known him since way back. I knew he would be the perfect man to provide the growling vocals as well as the clean vocals. Lots of songs, lots of ideas, lots of brutal riffs, lots of sensitive melodies flying about. And, um, well, there's six, six people, six persons in the band, out of which um, four or five actually write the music so uh, there's a, an abundance of musical material and uh, so we've all done our individual compositions mm -hmm. anything from skull wrenching riffery to some acoustic passages and some even some pastoral moments in a way it was smooth in a way it was okay. smooth and uh, it was what it kept the chemistry. Chem chemistry certainly helped out because uh, everything was so relaxed. Of the Moog, uh, of the mini, uh, of the Moog, actually, because uh, as, as somebody pointed out, <coughs> me actually, that it's uh, Moog in the side is actually pronounced Moog and not Moog. You know, we love the smell of old Moogs in the morning. There was uh, not hardly any sense of pressure for schedule or it was just no. a very, very no, mellow. I think the only, only uh, element of pressure was uh, will the mini Moog stay in tune or not? The studio session was actually very relaxed and easy for me and for the most of the band, I guess. Nobody had to struggle with their parts so much. And uh, we, we had prepared songs very well. Personally, I liked, liked the uh, Seawolf Studios very much. It was the first time to record there. I usually finished my drum tracks during the first or second take to keep the uh, natural and raw feeling. I never was a fan of very much editing the drums or any instruments in the studio, so uh, it was quite natural. Twilight, uh, Mar Marco came out with it. Never did pop song. Oh, yeah. out. It's pretty like a mainstream even. Targeted for rock radio. Yeah. It's it never was, gonna get there though, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it was one of those songs where, uh, where uh, like um, when 
I, I guess it was Sami who sang the um, uh, chorus. Uh, like people almost like start to laugh or something. Like, uh, oh man, this is like so so eighties. <laughs> one of my my tracks mm. and uh, it's an old melody I had just uh, rearranged and um, it's a bit of a combination of light and shade there's uh, some some pastoral piano playing but then there's also a heavy riffery and in the midsection you'll find some choral complex choral harmonies there and, and uh, the lyrics are actually written by uh, Richard Dawkins of Finland, Mr. Jussi Kooniema, who's a neighbor of mine actually, and, uh, and a very good lyricist and poet, amongst other things. And, uh, and he, he wrote the lyrics, and it's very good lyrics. I'm not too sure about half the words what they're singing about, but it sounds really good. So it's a jewel in all this world. It's not all the straightforward or uh, only the mellow stuff, but uh, it combines the two. two that elements just perfectly. Yeah, and there's an experimental playing going on as well. There's a, there's a keyboard solo, but not just any keyboard solo. It's a Hammond solo, but not just any Hammond solo. It's a Hammond solo with a, played through a wah-wah pedal. So, a bit of psychedelia coming your way. Flame of Serenity. Uh, it's just like simple, almost like uh, there are some sort of uh, black metal is feeling in its strong way like uh, uh, and some in a like excellent song into it <coughs> and if you like uh, remember that those are just like a demo songs for promotional um, means uh, I think they, they like uh, came up pretty, pretty well indeed for them. Yeah, it, uh, they were recorded one year before the actual album, album sessions where we recorded Jewel and Hot Twilight yeah. and Dan managed to get them get them sound like they fit in. Yeah. About Floor Dread, it's, it's like that was the only song which, which was like really obvious that we, we want to put it to the album because it was like kind of um, already uh, outdated in a way uh, because it was like this um, uh, we were supposed to be what like, death metal band anyhow in the first place and, but uh, then something happened it's just something happened yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah but um, oh but there were, we are still there is still a death metal element very much so yeah and then there will be death there will be there will be it's like a also crucial crucial like uh, element of, of the band uh, but, but still yet there was this uh, like progressive ending part, ending theme in Florida, so uh, there were some marks already yeah. uh, in the air. Shape of things to come. <laughs> <laughs> 